Thank you, Chairman. Um, I really appreciate uh, the testimony today and the leadership of our Chairman uh, Payne. Um, what do you all think would be most Im the most impactful way to increase the number of black and brown professionals in the rail sector overall and, and the passenger rail sector in particular? Uh, is this led by industry or is there more action needed from the FRA or DOT or even Amtrak to better implement programs that are already in place and, and, and what new efforts might we consider? And what can the subcommittee uh, do to advance diversity in, in aviation? I'd like to uh, answer that. Uh, one of the things that has to happen is um, what I see, and, and I have to commend uh, the agency that has given me probably my biggest leg up and the most work, and that's Dallas Area Rapid Transit. And what they do is it starts at the top. It starts with the CEO. It starts at the board level. And it is encouraged. Everyone knows who goes to work for DART that you're going to start off with the goal, but that's the minimum. That's the floor. You're not going to win if the goal is 30% and you come in with 30%. And case in point, we had a project um, that we had. Um, I ended up as a joint venture partner, 50-50, and um, uh, we brought on 15 different minority subs. We saved the agency $4 million, and we brought it in two months ahead of time. And the participation on that project was 61%. That doesn't happen unless it starts from the top down. Representative Carter, this is wrong. Uh, trickle down economics just does not seem to work when it comes to getting work with the railroad sector. So to your question, would industry be uh, uh, right people to take the charge? Uh, we have not seen that be effective. It has to be basically both a carrot and a stick approach from the federal government to uh, ensure that there is some incentive for smaller minority firms to get some work. So that, that is what we feel. Kenneth Candy with Janice. Um, you know, you've, you've got these, a lot of these bad actors out there and they're typically large, large companies because they get away with this stuff. And um, I think the most effective thing you can do is make it part of the, um, the criteria for picking companies to do this work. If they have any of this in their background, it needs to be used um, in evaluating if you want to use them for work. Because correspondingly, there are some real good firms out there, medium, medium size, two, three hundred million dollar range, who, who they started off as small guys. And they're not necessarily minority, but they started off as small guys. And they just don't tolerate this stuff. They just don't tolerate it because they're they're a bit come in and work and we're going to give you a fair chance. And they haven't gotten so big where the racism is actually profitable to them. That's the thing is the racism is profitable and discriminatory acts are profitable to these people. That's why they continue doing it. They don't, they do it because it's profitable. So you've got, I think this committee, the agencies, but through the leadership of this committee have to make that, even if you hear about it, it needs to be answered because where there's smoke, there's fire. Well, that's helpful. Um, lastly, um, I, I'm proud to represent the largest rail maintenance facility uh, in Beach Grove, Indiana, one of the cities in my district, uh, where they repair locomotives and passenger rail cars. They do great work there. Um, we'd like to see them do more, but there appears to be a closed process that's, that's really hard to break if you don't know someone at the facility. And this challenge isn't unique to our district. Uh, it's a challenge for many facilities across the country, uh, particularly as it relates to hiring black and brown applicants. Um, what, what, what can be done to open these doors wider so we can bring in more diverse workers? This is an Amtrak maintenance facility, by the way. Well, I think it's incumbent upon us as minority contractors to 
reach out and try and train uh, individuals who are interested in the uh, work, for example, in the rail industry. Um, we did the maintenance on the WMATA contract uh, when they had the, uh, uh, the work that they had to complete very quickly, uh, the fast track part work. And we went to a trade, trade school uh, in Brooklyn uh, and brought down over 50 students who had just graduated. And we gave them the opportunity to learn. We trained them. Uh, we gave them housing. Uh, and these graduates did a wonderful job for us uh, uh, as we completed the work successfully. Uh, and many of them now have careers uh, in doing track work. Um, so we took it upon ourselves to do this. Uh, and now we do have another maintenance contract. We're just starting today uh, with Shell. And we have several people that were coming down to work on this project that we gave the opportunity to work in Washington two years ago. So uh, we have done this ourselves. I think there should be some kind of incentive uh, to um, hire workers and train them uh, some kind of tax credits or something like that that would make a difference to the contractor and would make a difference in pricing that we would give to the prime contractors. Thank you. So, <laughs> Thank you. Uh, the Thank chair you, now recognizes.